Everybody, what's up? What's good? It's your boy BQ. This is the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. I try to do these videos every once in a while, talking to you guys about this as we see the information uh, trickle in on the internet. We never know how you know, accurate, accurate it is. I would imagine it's fairly accurate, though. Um, and we're going to get into this real quick, do a quick video. It's your first time here. As I said, it's the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan, so make sure you are a subscriber. And uh, right now in 2020, Impact is averaging 151,000 uh, viewers, live viewers per episode. Now, that's obviously a far cry from what they were used to do on Pop TV, which was, you know, routinely pretty close to 300,000, which at the time didn't seem like a lot of people. And this is, you know, cutting that in half. Now, with every day that passes, every week, every month that passes, less and less people consume, you know, the content for live television. Uh, I don't watch Impact as it airs. I, I have it for a while um, just because they don't, it's, it's not must see to me. You know, obviously I love the program. I love the show. I love the company. It's not must see television for me. So usually the next morning I watch it on, uh, I watch through Sling TV, but less and less people watch, you know, live pro or uh, programming as it airs. So just cause we see the 151,000 does not mean it's, you know, the, uh, the, the final number. Um, I think it's usually safe to cut the number in half or so with DVR. I think I think that's what's safe, but uh, 151,000 is what they're averaging. What is concerning is out of that though, the average age, uh, well, I'm sorry, not the average age, but the 18 to 49 demo, which is really important, is um, only 39,000 of that 151, which tells us Impact has a pretty old audience. And that's why I've, I've talked about, you know, stop trying to appeal to the ECW fans, the Tommy Dreamer fans, um, RVD and Rhino, these guys, you know what I mean? ECW went out, I must have been 23 when ECW went out of business. I'm almost 41 now. I'll be 41 in like two days. So I'm flirting with that 49 end of that demographic. And, you know, I said this in my last video when I talked about viewership. Uh, we, we see the we see the commercials on Access TV, Holly Robinson P, and and uh, testosterone medication, and, uh, you know, '60s bands. Uh, you, you you feel me on that? So we know that it's an older audience. That that's a little alarming for me. And you know, even though in the wrestling landscape, 151,000 isn't a lot of people. In the totality, it is a lot of people that watching the show. But when we're on Twitter and Facebook and we're commenting, you know, on impact posts, it's almost like we all know each other, right? You know, it seems like it's a lot of the same people. And it tells me, even though there's a larger audience out there, you know, this audience is not necessarily hanging out on social media. And that's where it becomes a problem when you rely on social media a lot, especially Twitter for um, putting your information out there. So they definitely have to come up with a, you know, marketing scheme that's going to bring in a younger audience and just, you know, a new vision, new fresh vision. And, um, you know, I talk about it all the time. You know, I'm not gonna keep repeating myself on that. When they went to head, head to head with NXT, they did 102,000 viewers, which was a big drop off. And then the next week they did 78,000. So it was a really big drop off. Now I, I think NXT does live television. So that, that's gonna win every time. That's just, that's just the way it is. Regardless if you think Impact or NXT is better, you know, which one you like more, you know, if, if one is live and one isn't, um, that's just the way it is, just the way it's gonna be plain and simple. The real positive is that September 22nd, which was pretty recent, that episode did 200 and, or 200,000 viewers, which tied for their uh, largest audience this year. The largest audience, the one it tied with was on January 7th. So it was a while ago. Um, is that when they debuted? roughly on access tv i want to say it was the top of the year it could be totally wrong on that and that was one of the um nights where we got a tino dashwood versus uh jordan grace in the main event so to me to me Tennille's the best gimmick on impact right now so um i think that's good that that was highlighted um but but that's that's a real good positive that's that's a big jump up from what the average viewership is you know to get that 200k and you know hopefully it continue to trend upwards um, I don't know how much it's trended upwards since Slammiversary. I, I could probably, I have the graphic of week by week. I just, I haven't um, 
looked at it like that. So maybe next time I do a podcast, the cool factor B side or something, maybe I'll talk about it a little bit and see how it's improved since Slammiversary. Um, but with Bound for Glory, hopefully there's not a whole lot of buzz and never is around Bound for Glory, but hopefully they can get some excitement going and then we can, you know, see these numbers continue to rise. So thanks for tuning in. It is your boy BQ and I'm out. Peace.